Ask Reddit. People who have traveled to China, what is your WTF China story? I visited Shanghai, and I stumbled into the marriage market. Hundreds of elderly parents with flowers with photos and resumes of their unmarried adult children milling about, trying to arrange matches. It was like seeing the floor of a busy stock exchange. <laughs> Waiting to use an ATM. Standing about 5 feet behind the person using it like any normal American would. Another person walks up and stands directly behind the guy using it. Then another. Then another. Then another. Nuts two butts. No space between them. I'm now 6th in line for the ATM. Your mistake was obviously leaving the 5 feet gap. In China, you need to ignore comfort zones and push yourself up against the guy in front of you while resting your chin on his shoulders. All joking aside, I've had this happen many times and I just told them I was already waiting. So far, they were always quick to move back. Used to travel to China 4x per year for several years for business. Got into taxi to go from bus station in Zigan to hotel. Right after picking us up, the taxi driver stops and lets in a policeman in the front seat. They proceed to discuss how much it would cost to get the driver's friend out of police detention. Policeman calls his supervisor at the police station to negotiate the bribe amount while getting a finder's fee himself for facilitating the transaction. Wasn't surprised by the corruption, but rather by how open it was. Since I'm ethnically Chinese, they probably thought I was a local and can be ignored. My Portuguese grandmother has a similar story. She was visiting Brazil with her American daughter and stepson when she heard the taxi driver communicating over the CB radio in Portuguese that he was going to drive these idiot tourists around the whole city before going to the hotel. She is one feisty little old lady and laid right into him in Portuguese before telling her stepson to make sure they take the most direct route. They said the driver started to apologize and she told him to shut his mouth. Haha. <laughs> So many. I worked it as an IT manager for a college in Nanjing. My boss, who was Chinese, actually probably still is, got his job because he was an excellent table tennis player. He knew nothing about computers, but acted like he did to save face. He also made the same amount per month as me, but within a month, was driving a new BMW and was wearing a Rolex. Lots of kickbacks and corruption there. I lived in China for a few years several years back. What's so weird is that things that seemed strange at first became so routine that I actually had to rack my brain to think of examples. The one that has always stuck with me was one of my first bus rides when we went down a slight hill and I felt something warm rush over my feet. I learned the hard way that day that many babies slash toddlers don't wear diapers and just have slits in the crotch of their pants. When they have to go, be it on the street, in a store, or on a bus, they just crouch down and let it flow. I lived in China for two years. I'm an American white guy. My first time in a public restroom in the mainland, I was at a urinal and a guy craned his neck to check out my dick, looked up and locked eyes with me, and gave me a big smile and a thumbs up. Sitting on a bench outside a GZ metro stop waiting for a friend, a guy asked if he could take a photo with me. I said, uh, oh, sure I guess, and one sided so with him, an actual line formed to take a photo with me. The first time I saw someone sling a baby over a garbage can with a slit in the seat of its pants. Baby blows mud into the trash can, mom gives it a half footed wipe and they just keep moving. Torrential downpour at the university I taught it for the first time. Actually use toilet paper is scattered everywhere once the flooding recedes, because their storm sewers and sewage sewers are one and the same. Went to a small town and stopped in for a haircut at a barber shop, because my hair was looking rough. Barber openly refused me service on the grounds that he doesn't much care for white people. There are tons more. The time I've spent in China was constantly amazing and eye-opening, but also pretty regularly delved into absolute WTF territory. I'd move back for sure. It rules. <laughs> Locals crowded round my so to gaze in wonder at his hairy arms. When he undid a couple of shirt buttons they went nuts. Our hotel rooms were thoroughly searched by someone. Nothing stolen but things had obviously been rifled through and little attempt to hide it. Our guide just shrugged. Edit, not religious, not in tech, not a writer, not a spy, just an ordinary couple on holiday. They didn't even take cash. 
Lol. I remember being at a factory in Zhongshan one day. I'm sitting chatting to one of the engineers there through a translator and I realize that for the last 30 seconds or so this guy has just been stroking my arm hair while maintaining the conversation perfectly. I just looked down and burst out laughing and he kind of smiled like a shy teenage girl. It was hilarious and awkward at the same time. He was just fascinated by it. I also get called golden monkey by the owner of this factory. She'll run up and greet me with a big smile and scream with joy yesssss the golden monkey has come back to see me. She's a bit of a milf too. China is ducking surreal. There are basically no trash cans. At one point I saw a woman holding her kid in the air to piss in a trash can amd my reaction was holy shit a trash can. This was right outside of the forbidden city. It was the same way in Tokyo, which really confused my wife and I at first. Especially because the whole city was clean in spite of this. We soon learned that it's a part of their culture to bring their trash home and throw it away there. It's your problem, not the city's. A black friend of mine said that a little Chinese girl came up and licked him because her friends told her that he was made of chocolate. That's the creepiest adorable thing I've ever heard of. It's adorifying. I'm a very normal looking female American. Dirty blonde hair, blue eyes, 5 foot 5. When I was in Beijing people kept walking up behind me and then their friend would take a picture of us. At first I was like what the duck is going on. Then I finally got someone to tell me that a lot of Beijing tourists are people from the country making a big trip to the city and have never seen a white person in real life. So after that when someone would try to sneak up behind me, I would just smile and use some sort of sign language to say, let's just take the picture together. So there are about 20 random Chinese country people with pictures of me, like we are best friends at random spots around Beijing. A friend of mine has a long grey beard and is quite round in the belly region. He gets stopped every couple minutes in busy places, since he looks like Santa Claus apparently. A little girl even dragged him home in the Hutans and excitedly told her parents that she found Santa. They were totally embarrassed and tried to apologize a hundred times. Our translator had a good laugh. I traveled to China this past May and I was shocked at the amount of little kids who don't wear diapers and that they go to the bathroom right in the street or wherever they happen to be. We were in the forbidden city on a very crowded day and a little girl squatted down and peed right in the middle of a crowd. Everyone acted like it was normal and then people proceeded to walk through the puddle. WTF China. We also watched two men get into a fist fight in the middle of a crowded street because they had road rage. My teacher points it out like hey look. Those guys are getting into a fight. Like it was some sort of spectacle haha. <laughs> I was traveling with a group in China right before the Beijing Olympics. I'm a 6 feet tall black dude and according to our tour guide, black people are incredibly rare to see in China. This is relevant for the story. So on the day that we were going to see the Great Wall, I just happened to be wearing a football jersey, American football, I brought with me. Apparently being relatively tall, black and wearing sports apparel is enough for some Chinese people to think that you are a professional athlete. We get to the Great Wall and start walking around. It's much steeper than you would think and some parts are pretty difficult to walk when I'm quickly swarmed by tons of Chinese people who want to take a picture with me. I'm normally very reserved and quite the introvert, but as the crowd around me started to grow I just decided to go with it. So I smiled, took pictures and signed autographs to my heart's content. That is until I was asked to leave because the group around me was getting so large it was blocking the entire span of the wall and people couldn't get past. A similar thing happened few weeks later when I was flying into Shanghai and was walking through the airport wearing sunglasses and a backpack and a few people thought I was Kanai West. I wonder if anyone's made a game out of it yet, like trading pictures with tourists like Pokemon cards. Like oh hey man, I just got a suburban white mom. Got anything good? Yeah dude, you wouldn't believe what I just got. I got a super rare black dude and with a football jersey skin too. Nice. My wife works in an international language school and they get a lot of Chinese students. Two stories that stick out. 
First was the teenage girl whose family was absurdly wealthy to the point that this girl had never done a single thing for herself. She got kicked out of her host family's house after a few incidents like trying to cook raw chicken in the toaster. The worst thing though was her lack of awareness about feminine hygiene. She, honest to god, had made slash nannies that would insert a feminine product for her, so she didn't know how. She asked her host mother to do it and refused to just be taught how to do it herself. When her underwear got sullied, she hand washed them and laid them on a white leather couch to dry, leaving diluted period stains on the sofa. My favorite part is that this girl with the education level of a 10 year old was under the impression she'd return to China in 2 years as a medical doctor. The other story I remember was a man in his 30s who had that psychological tick where you compulsively pull your hair out. He had the most bizarre baldness pattern because he actually couldn't stop himself from just plucking his own hairs. The school being worried about this asked him if he'd been to a doctor. He said that he had in China and the doctor in China told him that he was bald because he was feeling guilty about something and that caused his hair to stay just below his scalp. If he found out what he was guilty about and confessed, his hair would grow back. This was not an herbalist or a homeopath. This was an actual medical doctor in a hospital. I used to live in China, I'm an American, so I could write a volume of books on this subject. I was traveling during a national holiday once, big mistake, and decided to take a 16 hour train. The trains are always packed but this was just ridiculous. We were completely crammed in like a pile of neat bricks. Being a white guy with long hair and a beard I clearly stuck out, even in this crammed sardine can. An extremely polite Chinese teenager, which is not uncommon at all for foreigners, begged me to take his seat. It was a 16 hour ride, and seats were basically treated like rare pearls. I refused until his iron willpower defeated my own. As soon as I sat the entire crowd of people in my vicinity turned and looked down at me. Stead actually. For hours. They were mesmerized by my alien attributes. They talked openly in Chinese about how strange I was probably guessing a creature like me couldn't possibly understand their human language. I felt like an exhibit in a zoo. All of a sudden out of nowhere a hand reaches out of the crowd holding a banana. I was actually famished and realizing the food cart would never make it through the throng. I thankfully took the fruit. As soon as I peeled it and took a bite I heard a wave of murmurs and gasps. I looked up from my delicious banana smiling and noticed everyone else was smiling back at me. I only caught one word that was repeated several times through several separate conversations. I kept hearing howsy. Howsy means monkey. <laughs> Went to a temple just outside of Shanghai and I desperately needed to go to the toilet to piss. I had been to many places in Asia, so I wasn't phased by the squad toilets, but this whole toilet block was something else. It was grotty as duck, had a 1 inch pool of water all across the ground and smelled terrible. There were no cubicles, no walls, nothing. Just 6 or 8 squat toilets on the ground. I don't recall seeing any toilet paper. There were two guys shitting. One was reading a newspaper. The other was talking to two other guys who were just hanging out directly opposite him smoking cigarettes. They were all deep in conversation, while one guy was squatting down laying a nasty shit. He was farting, and I could almost hear the turtle's head poking out. The only thing which was unusual for them was the white guy who just walked in. Hey guys, whatcha doin'? Poopin'? I traveled to China last year with my partner, who was teaching in Beijing. We decided we wanted to ride camels in the Gobi Desert because of reasons. Getting to Mongolia was way too expensive and a hassle for our time schedule, so we ended up taking an overpass train to Zhangli, which is just up against the desert. Lonely Planet recommended one guy, Billy, ducking Billy, in the guidebook for this camel excursion. So we hire Billy, he drives us out to this random place and a local farmer walks up with three camels for our overpass trek into the desert. Billy hands the farmer some cash, not nearly enough, we think, and we get on the camels and go with this guy who speaks no English and probably speaks a dialect of Mandarin. Anyway, off we go. It's hot. It's full of dunes. It's cool as duck. Billy has warned us that dinner will be simple backcountry fare. Billy is not with us, by the way. Ducking Billy. No problem. We backpack a lot. We can dig it. We stop for camp and the guy builds a fire and puts white rice in a pan. 
We watch, waiting for the salt, the pepper, the veggies, the something. But nope. We got served plain, white rice for dinner, and some apples that tasted like soap, and this weird pickled thing that tasted like. Goodness knows, we are not picky eaters. We are adventurous eaters. But this was the worst. We also got these weird processed meat sticks that looked, smelled, and I guess tasted like dog food. Ducking Billy had given us beer, though, and that probably had more nutritional value than the white rice, so we drank that. The next day, we had ramen for breakfast, would have been better for all the meals, and trekked back to the town. I swear Billy was keeping his overhead like zero. He was profiting off of being a Chinese guy who spoke English, and who somehow got Lonely Planet, and don't even get me started on those guys and their terrible advice in China, to list him in his book. I think he paid the farmer a pittance of the $300 or, so we paid him. We tipped the farmer generously before Billy picked us up. And Billy probably paid next to nothing for the rice. So that's the story of how we got ripped off by ducking Billy in China. But on that same trip, when we were hanging out in Zhangwei one evening, as the only westerners and an interracial couple at that, we were sitting having dinner. And a group of women out for a girls night paid for our dinner and insisted on taking us for karaoke. They spoke no English and got a young kid who spoke English to ask us. We played Chinese drinking games, sang in English while they sang in Mandarin and had the best ducking time. China can be WTF in all the worst and best ways. You have been visited by the Grim Papa. If you want to be spared, subscribe and comment. Spare me Papa.